Hi, this is Bob Brown, and welcome to my YouTube channel. This is recorded December 10th, Saturday, 2016. And this is about uh, several threads that I think are interconnecting together. The big thing that everyone's talking about on the internet and, ma and the, the mainstream media, mass media, is fake news. So we have fake news, that's one concept. Two, we have Russian hacking, Russian interference with the United States election process in the United States of America. And three, we have kind of a blast from the past with the Clintons because of the fall of the Soviet Union, the, the, the new Soviet Union, or the Russia became the, from, when Russia transitioned from the Soviet Union to the Russian Federation under Boris Yeltsin, Bill Clinton was president. And there was a connection and probably somewhat of a comradeship between uh, Boris Yeltsin and Bill Clinton, even though they did disagree over the Chechen war. And then there was a lot of corruption in Russia under Boris Yeltsin. The oligarchs took over. There's a, a lot of international uh, internationalization of Russia's uh, of natural resources. Was, there was hyperinflation. And basically it became so corrupt that that people were longing for the old days of the Soviet Union at this time. And then what Yeltsin did, he basically resigned pretty much in disgrace because he had already committed some illegal acts under the new Russian Federation's constitution. And of course he handed the reins of power over to his chosen successor, Vladimir Putin. So these are the histories. So, they found, so at the forming of the Russian Federation, you have three main characters. You have William Jefferson Clinton, you have Boris Yeltsin, and you have Vladimir Putin. Those three were at the formation of the, they were there, and, and they had a heavy influence on the formation of the Russian Federation. Bill Clinton, because he was president of the United States, Boris Yeltsin was, was the president of the Russian Federation during the transition after the fall of the Soviet Union under Gorbachev. Yeltsin took over, and then again, eventually, Vladimir Putin. Yeltsin, when he was as, as president in his last days, he kind of outlawed all political opposition. There was a, an attempted coup against Yeltsin. Troops loyal to Yeltsin put it down. It was a pretty brutal uh, uh, crackdown on the opposition. And then it was handed into Putin's hand. Putin, of course, now Putin comes in. He's KGB. Uh, Vladimir Putin, of course, uh, views this, the fall of the Soviet Union as the worst thing that ever happened in human history. Vladimir Putin's big hero is Joseph Stalin, which, you know, I can't understand that and you can't understand that, but Vladimir Putin understands that. And then uh, you have to look at Putin's uh, machismo. He's a judoka. He, he does judo. He's a martial artist. He's KGB. Um, he deplored the fall of the Soviet Union, and he's one tough uh, ombre, just to put put it mildly. As I said earlier in another video, if you if you're in Russia and you oppose Vladimir Putin, you better get a really good life insurance policy because you will not survive. Vladimir Putin rules Russia with a titanium fist. So you have you have a person, Vladimir Putin, who sees, in my opinion, this is just my opinion, his goal in life is to reconstitute the Soviet Union. 100%. I think no one should deny that he is out to reconstitute the Soviet Union. And Putin sees a great opportunity because the European Union is a mess. It's in debt crisis. It has migrant crises. It's ill-led. It's falling apart. Britain, Britain has had its Brexit. It's, it's on the verge. of It's tattering apart. So Vladimir Putin says, why shouldn't I just roll back in? Because he probably could. NATO is in disarray. And Vladimir Putin has completely outmaneuvered uh, the U.S. in Syria. Remember, we were, President Obama had his red line. They crossed the red line. Nothing happened. Now, all of a sudden, everybody's trying to do something to handle Syria. And now the Russians are so deeply entrenched there, it's impossible for the United States to be, have any real say in what happens in Syria right now. They can be, they can be at the table. We can be at the table with the Russians and the Iranians, but we're going to be at the table. We won't be running the table. And, uh, and that's all fine and well. If they want that mess, fine. The United States, we've had enough trouble in there. 
So then you have fake news. So what are you to make of this? So you're a business person, and of course this channel is dedicated to business. So should I invest in Russia? Should I, if I have Russian uh, company, if I have interest in Russia, if I own Russian stocks, if I have suppliers and vendors in Russia, if I have customers in Russia, what, what, what do I do? That's a tough question. I, my belief is, number one, I, I'm pretty convinced from studying the what little you can get publicly, you know, reading Donald Trump's book, reading the biographies on Vladimir Putin. What I synthesized in my mind is the following. I think Vladimir Putin and Donald Trump have some understanding of each other. I don't know if I use the word admiration, but they do have some kind of understanding of each other. Vladimir Putin sees himself as as, as he went to war against the oligarchs and he pretty ruthlessly put them down. And of course, if you're friends of Vladimir Putin, you made a lot of money because Vladimir Putin would hand out what he took from the oligarchs because in his opinion it was taken away from the Russian people, the Russian government, illegally and immorally, and he just he took it away from them and he gave it back. There's an eerie echo of that in Donald Trump's philosophy. And full disclosure, I voted for Donald Trump, mostly because Hillary Clinton's rhetoric towards Russia was somewhat alarming. But there is an echo, there's an eerie echo of what Putin did to the oligarchs in Trump's philosophy of the wall, the tariff, and his really, his Twitter, his Twitter feeds against companies like Rexnord of Indianapolis, I'm, I'm in Indiana, uh, against them. Now, I'm not suggesting that Donald Trump is going to turn into Vladimir Putin. He's not. But he is definitely reading the playbook of Vladimir Putin. And where, and where the strategies make sense, not the tactics, where the strategies make sense, it's happening here. So, in the case of America, under NAFTA, in my opinion, NAFTA allowed the rise of oligarchies in America. The oligarchical corporations became kind of the norm. I've seen this firsthand. I've, I've, I've lived under it firsthand. I've seen corporations come in and they decide, hey, we're going to move this to Mexico, we're going to move this to China, we're going to move this here. And, and really there was no real clear business case given other than I want to move it to China, I want to move it to Mexico. They want to move it to Mexico to save on labor. They want to move it costs. They want to move it to China to save on labor costs. Well, if you're a student of Eli Goldratt and the and the throughput theory of the goal, Eli Goldratt is an Israeli scientist who wrote a book many years ago called The Goal. And in that, if you read Goldratt's theorems and you look at lean manufacturing, labor costs are really not the most pro they're not the problem that gov the business is facing in America. Trump is right that many of the things that people face in America are regulations and taxations to a point. But I would also point out that poor leadership costs most companies the most money. Poor leadership, poor management, ill-trained management, that's what your real that's your real cost right there. But we don't want to talk about that because that's going to offend somebody, so we don't. But in reality, poor leadership, poor business knowledge, poor understanding of markets, that's your real cost. Regulations and taxations are somewhat important, but really what your problems are that you have to buy equipment, machinery, real estate, that's what costs you a lot. And real estate does cost more here. But really I think it's poor leadership is the real cost. If you're, with, if, if you're in a company that has great leadership and you know, uh, you'll, you, you'll, no one really worries about the cost of labor that much because they realize it's not really the most important thing that's going on here. If you own a lawn care business, you can hire people and pay them. As long as you have work for them to do, you can pay those people. You, you, can't, you can fire those people. You can fire your, your uh, lawn workers. But you can't fire the debt you owe on your lawnmower, your truck, your trailer, and all your equipment. You can't fire them. You can't fire those machines. You can sell them. You can liquidate them. And you can regain cash, but then your course of business is gone. So human beings 
really are not the most expensive part of a business. If you look at a lawnmower business, if I sat down and said, okay, how much do you pay a month on your truck and on your lawnmowers and on your insurance? And if you went on and you'll, you'll see that the labor cost is really not that, it's, it's significant, but not as significant as people make it. So, and so, of course, a lawnmower business can't really outsource itself to Mexico and China. You can say, well, we can import Mexican workers, but you, and, and that's true to some extent, but you can't move your business to China and cut grass there. You have to cut grass here. And amazingly, a lot of lawnmower businesses stay, stay, they stay very busy, especially here in Indiana. How do they manage that? Because the labor is not the most expensive part. It's really the machinery. That's the most expensive part. But companies haven't caught up to that, so they're still outsourcing. Now, I bring all that up because what Trump's doing, in my opinion, and this, I'll, and this ties into fake news, is that Trump is basically, he has, he's taken some pages from Vladimir Putin on how to handle the oligarchs. Because the oligarchs in our nation became powerful under Clinton and the Republican Congress at that time that put NAFTA in. Because once NAFTA was put in, what people don't understand is it gave free license for people to wipe out unions. Now, unions nowadays make up maybe under 10% of the U.S. working population. But if you work for any manufacturing business that can be moved or is mobile, you live under the pall of NAFTA fear because the oligarchs that run these major corporations, if they don't like what they see and if Wall Street doesn't like what they're doing, well, we'll just move it to Mexico, we'll lower our labor costs. But in reality, I, I keep telling people, that's, that shows me when people do that, that you really have, your real problem is most likely leadership. It's probably leadership and management's your problem, because you're going to blame it on labor costs, but it's probably you don't know how to manage your supply chains, you don't know how to manage your production scheduling, you don't know how to manage your machine uptime, you don't know how to manage your maintenance of your machines, you don't know how to do proper uh, arrangements with your vendors and get better supplies. Some people go out and buy two years worth of supplies because they get a better break on costs. Would you do that? Yeah, I'm going to go out and buy two years worth of beer. Well, the beer will go bad, obviously, but would you really go out and buy two years worth of beer just because you can get a discount? No, because you may change, you may want a different beer, and then you got to store all that beer, and then the beer could go bad or someone can steal it, or something could happen, there could be a fire, or there could be water damage, and then you lose all that money. So rational people say, I'll go buy you know, a six-pack of beer, a case of beer, but I'm not going to stock up you know, you know, for two years. Unfortunately, a lot of people who buy things for companies will do that. And they'll tie up all that working capital, and nothing can happen. So what does this have to do with fake news? Well, I'm saying that you have NAFTA that's going away. You have an oligarchy, and that includes the, the mass media. You have an oligarchy that suddenly, for the first time, is being threatened. Now, they're not being threatened the way Vladimir Putin threatened the oligarchs in Russia. Because, like I said, R Vladimir Putin rules with a titanium fist. No one dares go against Vladimir Putin. I mean, if you go against Vladimir Putin, you're done. You're completely done. But here in America, we are under the rule of law. But there are things that U.S. government and the president can do. Like they can build a wall. They can put up a big tariff. They can put a lot of pressure on you and say, you know what? If you don't play ball with me, if you make me look bad and move that company out of here and these workers get mad and I don't get reelected, you're not going to get any U.S. government contracts. And that's exactly the pressure that was put on Carrier. And when the Carrier president came, he sat down like a nice little boy and he talked to Mr. Trump about it. And it was really the pressure that, that the carrier workers on the election had, the, the appearance that Donald Trump needed this working class people. And, I, and I've said in other videos, this wasn't a white lash like Van Jones says. This was a blue lash. This was a blue collar lash against the political elite. It was a blue collar lash, and Trump needs those people. So that was a big deal for him to keep carrier here. So, so the, the political pressure and the political... Uh, image of the carrier workers being saved was very vital to Donald Trump's election. And that's why Carrier came to the table. And I think a lot of this started under NAFTA. This oligarchy is under NAFTA. What does it have to fake with fake news? The problem is all this is under threat. All this oligarchical system in America, 
very similar to Russia. It's, 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 there are eerie parallels between Russia, that, that what Putin did, and what we face now. There's very eerie parallels, historical parallels. Like they say, history doesn't repeat itself, but it sure does rhyme. And there seems to be an eerie parallel that NAFTA is going to go away, and then that whole structure where people can move companies at will, that the oligarchical type corporations that got together, you know, oligarchical uh, organizations are, you know, they're, they, they, they're, they can be competitors of each other, but they're so powerful and there's so few of the oligarchs that they can keep things the way they want. That's got to be broken apart. And as that's being broken apart, that opens up the avenue for the millennials, centennials, Gen Xers, and Gen Yers to be entrepreneurs. And, of course, oligarchs, like anybody, they don't want to deal with pesky things like competition. The mass media, <coughs> excuse me, they're facing the pesky competition of thousands of news outlets. Like, you know, my little dinky, insignificant news outlet. But there are many outlets on the Internet that are challenging them. This is the new entrepreneurial spirit sweeping through the world. <clears throat> and I don't think it's a, a I don't think it's any mistake that Clinton was there at the formation of with Boris Yeltsin, and then there was a lot of deals that the Clinton Foundation had with uranium rights for Russia back into the United States. There's a lot of quid pro quo that was happening between the Clinton Foundation and the Russians. And then Vladimir Putin comes in and says, you know what? We're done with this because I want the money, I want the power, and I need my people to support me. And I think this is where the fake news is coming. Because this is kind of a, a smoke screen <coughs> that's being put up. Is there fake news? I'm sure there is. But I don't really know. But it seems that we have these, like I said, there's these three competing forces there's, that we've, we've outlined. We have Vladimir Putin and the formation of Bill Clinton and Yeltsin of the Fed Russian Federation. We have the destruction of the oligarchs, we have the threatening of the oligarchs in this country. We have all these things happening at the same time. And this is where people say, hey, fake news is coming on. I really think what you're seeing is, is a kind of a parallel history happening in America in a much, much milder way, of course, to what happened in Russia when, <coughs> when Putin took down the oligarchs. Food for thought. This has been Bob Brown. As Remember, as always, keep studying.